and welcome to the Haverhill Journal, where we give you a quick look at what's going on in our city. I'm Lindsay Paris, and this week we're perusing the fine wares of Haverhill's premier art market and tasting our way through some of your favorite ice cream stands in the Merrimack Valley. But first, we know we've got a great city, but it's nice to be recognized by bigger media outlets like Boston's Fox 25, who visited Haverhill on one of their famed Friday zip trips August 7th. So, I set my alarm for a bright and early 6 a.m. that day to join hundreds of local residents down at Riverfront Park and enjoy all the morning madness. Every summer we, we choose about 14 to 15 cities uh, throughout Massachusetts and uh, New Hampshire or even Rhode Island to visit uh, cities that and towns that are enthusiastic about their community and, and are really driven about wanting people to come and visit and have a lot to showcase. And it's an opportunity for people uh, who have never been out or left their block or their street to see what, what their city and town is all about. It's part of the community that we, we live in, the community that we work in. And it's such a beautiful uh, uh, place to visit. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I came in town uh, with the photographer that I worked with and had an opportunity to, to talk with Stacy Bruzzese, uh, who was with the Greater Haverhill Chamber of Commerce, and she took me around to show me some of the uh, city's five treasures, and one of my favorite, Winnikinney Castle. I mean, who knew the history behind that castle? I'm Shauna Kelly from the Peyton Wine Lounge, and I'm really excited to be here today with the Zip Trip down here at Riverfront Park. And we have some paintings here. We're, one of our artists is painting, so we're having a lot of fun. There's a lot of people down here. I'm uh, one of the instructors over at the Paint Wine Lounge. We have a great time. Uh, I went to art school, and every once in a while, some of my fellow students would ask me, you know, what are you doing nowadays? And I, I get to tell them, well, I get to show up on a Thursday night and teach 15 gorgeous women how to paint, drink wine, and chit-chat. I get paid for it, too, so it makes them all jealous and everything. You know, Haverhill has a lot of things going on, so it's nice that everybody in Massachusetts will see that there's things to do here in Haverhill, like painting, uh, restaurants, there's the five treasures, there's places to see, there's museums. It's a great place to come in. You can get here on the tea. I'm really excited that Zip Trip is coming to Haverhill because it kind of, like, focuses the city and kind of like showcases us and you know it makes us like a proud. I'm here with our junior reporter. This is Amy. Hi. Amy's very excited to be here. Now Amy, as a junior reporter, we need to know a couple things about you. Okay. Okay, so what grade are you going into? Seventh. Seventh. Okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I want to do either photography or be a um, makeup designer. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Maybe for TV? I don't know. Oh, could be. I was the junior reporter. First, um, I was like very surprised because like I had just got here and I saw, oh well, they're doing the auditions now. I better hurry. So I ran over, and then I was surprised that I made it to the final round, um, and that was only me and two other kids. And then when they were announcing the winner, it was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna get it? Am I gonna get it? And then they said we're gonna have Amy do it, and I was like, oh yes. And they looked at my mom. I'm like. Good morning, I'm Rich Damari from the Maddie in the Morning Show on Kiss 108, and we got our junior reporter. Hi, my name is Amy Carney. I'm live from the Fox 25 Zip Trip in Haverhill. It's also a good chance for people who have never been to this city for them to see it firsthand and, and what a great opportunity to be the first to show them what Haverhill is all about. I'm not going to send it back to you because we've got our junior reporter Amy here. Go ahead, you can send it back to the folks in the studio. This is Amy and I'm reporting live from Zip Chip and sending it back to Fox 25 News. That was a really fun time. You can still watch some of Fox 25 coverage of the event online at myfoxboston.com under Zip Trips. It's one of the most important questions of the summer. What is the best ice cream stand in the Merrimack Valley? With so many to choose from within a short drive, it's almost impossible to pick. 
but the journal's Tom Jorgensen on his very last assignment for HC Media before embarking on his epic cross-country move to Los Angeles, and taste testers Sean Smith and Shana Richards took it upon themselves to find the most delicious black raspberry ice cream around. Hey, I'm Tom here with my trusty companions, Shana and Sean. Today we are going to be going all over the Merrimack Valley to find you the best ice cream around. What flavor should we have, you guys? Black raspberry. Definitely. I, there's no better ice cream flavor than black raspberry, so we're gonna try black raspberry at all these different ice cream places and we're gonna tell you which is the best. Here we go. All right, we're here at Carter's in Bradford and we are gonna try out some black raspberry here. This is the first stop of the day, so they have a lot to live up to. Everything we make here is, is uh, you know, top notch. Uh, it's top shelf everything, the best cream I can possibly get best ingredients. All right, now Carter's is putting themselves way ahead of the rest of the pack early on. They're gonna let us eat ice cream right out of the machine. This is black raspberry ice cream that has just been made. All right, so Jeremy, this ice cream that we've got here is fresh out of the machine. It's a completely different texture. Can you talk about what changes between when you take it out of the machine and when it goes into the freezer? Yeah, there's a couple of things. When it, when it first comes out of the machine, it, I mean, it looks kind of like soft serve, but it's really not that cold. And when you put it into the flash freezer in net negative 20, it'll takes about 12 to 24 hours. Right now, it's a really light purple, and that'll get much darker and the flavor gets much more intense also when it freezes. I've been making the black raspberry for about 25 years now. It's the best black raspberry. If you like black raspberry, come to Cottage Ice Cream. So we are currently enjoying our black raspberry from Carter's in Bradford, and it's fresh out of the machine. Jeremy said it when we were talking, very much like Cool Whip. It's a softer, uh, very creamy consistency, but it is absolutely delicious. What do you guys think about this? Well. I made a mess of myself, so it's good. Good. So yummy. That's all I have to say. What else needs to be said? Carter's has got it. All right, so here we are at Benson's in Boxford, and we have another cup of black raspberry here. This is very fresh looking. You can see little pieces of raspberry in there. The ice cream scene was started by my great grandmother in 1932. So this is our 83rd year of having ice cream. And she had a farm and she started to sell ice cream. So one of the things she did is she took fresh fruit from her farm and put it in the ice cream. So we still do the same thing with all of our fresh fruit flavors that we make. We have about 35 flavors total. We have fresh native red raspberry, fresh native strawberry, fresh native black raspberry, fresh main blueberry, fresh native peach. The fresh fruit are the most popular by far. I'm gonna grab a spoon from Sean. Did I get one? I got one, good, I didn't want to get two. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's try this out. They're really good. Mm. You can taste so good. the raspberries. The raspberries are very, very uh, prevalent in this. This isn't like flavored. This is actual like black raspberry ice cream. I could eat this all day, honestly. It is that good. This is very, very rich. It's very, it's it's almost, you get little pieces of raspberry to chew on. It's very, very fresh. So Benson's definitely earning high marks from HC Media's ice cream experts. All right, we're here in JG's in Methuen and we have our last cup of black raspberry ice cream, but they do it a little differently here. They have black raspberry Oreo ice cream. JG's is uh, family owned and operated by the Jafrita brothers. I am one of uh, three uh, partners, uh, one of four I should say. And uh, we've been in business now for, let's see, this is our 33rd season. We have all uh, homemade ice cream it's made here on site. Sean and I got the black raspberry Oreo. It looks like Shayna has defected to the chocolate team. Why? Too much black raspberry. It was overload. Wrong. No such thing. Do you like black raspberry? I yeah. I, it's, it's not one of my favorites, but black raspberry <laughs> is. Uh... Honestly, I really hate black raspberry. Anyway, Sean, let's ask you your opinion. What do you think of this? Oh, it's fantastic. I agree. This is like a really classic black raspberry flavor. It's that really strong kind of raspberry tinge to it. 
but it's also got these nice chunks of Oreo. It's kind of a cavalcade of amazingness. Now this brings us to kind of the end of our day of judging this ice cream from all over the Merrimack Valley. And I think we've reached a consensus, and that consensus is that the Merrimack Valley just has amazing ice cream all around. No one place is better than the other. That They're all amazing. So if you want to go out for ice cream in the Merrimack Valley, you definitely have your pick of all these different great ice creams. You can never choose just one. Visit Carter's, Benson's, JG's, and the rest of the local stands to try out that delicious black raspberry and dozens of other flavors to find your favorite. Whimsical walnut carvings, landscapes featuring area scenery and felted animals so lifelike it's hard to believe they aren't real, all locally produced. These items and many more are for sale at the Haverhill Art Market held the fourth Saturday of every month at 90 Washington Street downtown. The Journal took a stroll through the market to see what's on offer. The new art market has brought over a dozen fine artists to a centralized location where you can find items from pocketbooks to paintings to padukey carvings. I'm Greg Mutafis and I'm a cartoonist and designer from Haverhill and uh, I'm working on a few different projects now. I've got an original comic book series called Boom Squad and I've got the first two out of three issues today and I also do graphic design and postcard design and so I'm selling a lot of other fun stuff. I'm demonstrating wood carving today. I'm just making these little mice. You can see that they sit on the end of a, a shelf or something like that and here's one that's all carved. It's meal felting. It's um, it's like Play-Doh meets sewing. You just take a bunch of wool and you stab it with a barbed needle and it eventually takes the shape you want it to. This is our third art market and when we decided to put it together, we had our first casual meeting at the Sage Art Gallery. I think I was very interested in doing it because I've done several art fairs here in this same space, so I knew it was a wonderful space and I knew we needed something in the city, and we have such a large community of artists. The market accepts craftsmen from all types of mediums, and new vendors appear each month. We take submissions from people, artists, various artists in as many forms as possible. We are the jury, the five of us are the jury for this market. Each of us is an artist in um, his or her own right. We have several things that we're looking for. Quality, obviously, and variety, because a show that would be all, even though it might be all very high-end jewelry, wouldn't be very interesting to an audience. I met young Haverhill-based shoe designer Thomas Tan, selling his paintings to raise money for his true passion, creating custom footwear. I've been on a long way, long journey on, you know, designing footwear is my passion. Uh, my eventual goal, my ultimate goal is to merge high fa fashion footwear and performance footwear into one. I've been looking for a lot of uh, cobblers and shoe repair shops. Nobody was like wanted to take me and teach me the craft, so eventually I just got my own materials and got a book about it, did, did some research online on hand making shoes and that's the work in progress of it. I want to start my own brand, so the paintings in the back are, if anybody buys it, that will, I'll invest that money into shoemaking. So I'm just tearing papers. I, I found all these pretty incredible um, papers at the craft store the other day. They're all kind of marbled, and I was just inspired to do kind of a layered landscape with them. And um, I kind of, I call it tissue paper painting. The cool thing about tissue paper is that it's transparent, so if I want a darker color, I just keep layering and layering and layering. If I want to change a color, you know, if I want purple and I don't have purple, then I can do red and blue on top of each other. Whatever your budget may be, at this art market, you can find something unique and affordable. Sets of handcrafted note cards and select jewelry pieces are offered for under $15. If you have a little more to spend, there are hundreds of options available, including the dramatic wood pieces done by master carver Justin Gordon. I'm uh, a wood carver, and uh, I'll actually I'm a sculptor, but wood carving is one of the things I do. I've been doing this for 40-something years. Everything's from cherubs to chess pieces. 
Ninety Wash is beautiful space, and, and you know, the um, uh, Sharon over at the tap, she's very nice to us. You have flowers, you have some food, you have free water, there are cookies, and you know, friendly atmosphere right off the main street. You can walk right in, and everybody talking and having a good time. I like that the art market is very local and it's very approachable. I like the variety that we've got too, so you can get sculpture, pottery, photography. It's a lot going on here, so it's a nice mix. There isn't really something where artists can go or people can go to find artists. If you want to find art or you want to find an artist, this is the place to go. Explore the extensive selection at the next Haverhill Art Market this Saturday, August 22nd from 12 to 4 p.m. Future market dates include September 26th, October 24th, November 14th, and December 5th and 19th, 2015. As mentioned, the next Haverhill Art Market is being held this Saturday, August 22nd at 90 Washington Street, next to the TAP. The market will continue to be held monthly through Christmas. See their schedule of dates at haverhillartmarket.blogspot.com. The recently demolished Woolworths building downtown still holds a fascination in the minds of many residents who either remember its heyday or wish they could have been there. Now, relive all the excitement of those years at the Buttonwoods Museum's brand new fall exhibit, The Woolworth Era, kicking off with an opening reception September 3rd. Historic New England and HC Media have collaborated to produce a full-length oral history documentary about downtown Haverhill in the mid-20th century that will be screened for the first time that evening. A section of the legendary Woolworth counter will be on display, along with historic photos. And speakers include Alex Simmons, writer of the new Archie and Friends comic books, and Jeff Linehan, son of Skinny Linehan, who was the inspiration for Jughead. The reception is being held September 3rd from 6 to 9 p.m. at the museum, and the mid-century exhibit will be open during museum hours from September 9th to October 7th. If you have a story or event you'd like to see featured on the Haverhill Journal, call us at 978-372-8070 or email info at mediahc.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook or at our YouTube channel, HCTV Haverhill. And that's what's happening in Haverhill the week of August 20th. Just a quick reminder that Haverhill Public Schools reopen Tuesday, September 1st for grades 1 through 12 and Tuesday, September 8th for kindergartners. I'm Lindsay Paris and we'll see you next time.